All right, so are you ready to explore County Sligo in Ireland? Oh, Sligo, it's a hidden gem. It really is. We found articles, travel guides, even some historical accounts. Sounds like we're in for a treat. Oh, definitely. We're focusing on two iconic spots, <laughs> Ben Bulben, kind of like Ireland's Table Mountain. Ah, uh, yes, Ben Bulben. And then the historic Classy Bond Castle. Plus, we'll cover how to get there, what to do, you know. The practical stuff. Exactly. And of course, some must-try local food. Food is important. Absolutely. Okay. First up, Ben Bulben. You can't miss it. I mean, literally, it's one of the most photographed mountains in all of Ireland. So striking with that flat top, right? It dominates the landscape, and there's just this mystical air about it. And it's totally steeped in Irish mythology, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Legend says it's haunted by these spirits, Diarmuid and Grain, fleeing from a jealous giant. Wow, that's pretty intense. Imagine feeling that energy when you're hiking there. Oh, that gives me chills. <laughs> We also can't talk about Ben Bulben without W.B. Yeats, right? The famous Irish poet. Yeats spent his childhood summers in the area, and Ben Bulben was like this constant inspiration for him. It's even said that he wanted to be buried with Ben Bulben watching over him. At Drumcliff Churchyard. Exactly. Okay, shifting gears a bit, let's talk about Classy Bond Castle. Okay, so Classy Bond Castle is on the coast. Perched right on the edge of the Atlantic. Yeah, it's this stunning castle. But it's got a captivating history. Probably tragic, too, right? Yes. In 1979, it was the site of an IRA bombing. That's the one that killed Lord Mountbatten. Yeah. Prince Charles's great uncle. It was a huge deal. Worldwide outrage. Uh -huh. And especially for Prince Charles. They were very close. After that, Classy Bond Castle was bought by this guy, Hugh Tunney. You know him as the Beef Baron of Ireland. Wait, the Beef Baron? Okay, we're going to have to dive into that yeah. later. Oh, absolutely. So... To experience all this awesomeness, we need a home base, right? What about Sligo Town? Perfect spot. Charming, I hear. It's a really charming town, super vibrant culture, and you can easily get to all the attractions from there. Okay, so how do we even get to Sligo? Well, closest airport is Ireland West Airport, Knock. Ah, okay. But you can also fly into Dublin. Dublin. It's a bit farther, but you might have more flight options. And once we're there, what about transportation? Rent a car, train? Bus, what are we thinking? All good options. Buses and trains are great if you're on a budget. Okay. And they often have really scenic routes. I do love a good scenic route. But a car gives you more freedom, of course. True, true. Now, where do we stay? Well, Sligo has something for every budget. Perfect. You could splurge on a luxury hotel like the Glass House. They even have a spa. Ooh, a spa sounds nice. Or maybe something cozier like the Yeats Country Inn Hotel. Ooh, I love that idea. And if you want more independence, there are loads of self-catering apartments and cottages. Okay, that's good to know. And if you want to be closer to nature, there are even campsites. Okay, sold. So we've landed, we're settled, we're ready to explore Sligo Town itself. What's first on the agenda? You have to see Sligo Abbey. It's this beautifully preserved medieval monastery. I do love exploring old ruins. You can practically feel the history there. And the Sligo County Museum, that's got to be on the list too, right? Absolutely. You can learn all about the local history there. Yeah. And more about Yeats. Of course. And if you're looking for something more modern, you can check out The Model. It's a contemporary art center. Yeah. They've got a bit of everything. Exhibitions, performances, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I love a good art exhibit. <laughs> what about the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception? Oh, it's stunning. It got to be right. A gorgeous example of Gothic revival architecture and the stained glass windows are amazing. Oh, I bet. Okay, so we've got Sligo Town covered. You mentioned some day trip adventures earlier. Mm -hmm. What's outside of the town that we can't miss? Lough Gill is absolutely breathtaking. Okay, tell me more. It's this serene lake surrounded by lush greenery. And right on the shore, you'll find Park's Castle. A castle on a lake. How romantic. It is, but it's actually <laughs> a plantation castle. Plantation castle. Yeah. What does that even mean? So plantation castles like this one were built in the 17th century. English and Scottish settlers were planted in Ireland. Oh, I see. And they took over the land. It's a pretty complex and often turbulent period of Irish history. Wow, so Parks Castle, it's not just a pretty picture. It's like a window into this whole other era. Exactly. 
for something completely different, there's Caramore Megalithic Cemetery. Oh yeah, I've seen pictures. It's incredible. Oh, stone circles. It's a burial ground made up of these giant stones, some of them over 5,000 years old. Imagine walking among those ancient tombs. Wow, that's a serious deep dive into history. It is. And of course, you can't forget Yeats' grave. It's in Drumcliff, and it's got beautiful views of, you guessed it, Ben Bulbin. Ben Bulbin is everywhere. It's true. If you want some truly breathtaking views, you have to check out Glencar Waterfall. It's this cascading waterfall surrounded by the most lush greenery. I'm sold. So <laughs> picturesque. It is. Okay, what about a coastal escape? Moldmore is a charming village with seaside vibes, and you can actually see Classy Vaughn Castle from there. Now, we can't talk about Ireland without talking about food, right? Right. Sligo has some seriously delicious food. So beyond the classic Irish stew, what should we try? Okay, first of all, Sligo oysters. Okay. They're fresh from the Atlantic. I can practically taste them now. And don't miss the Lissadel mussels. Lissadel mussels. They're unique to the area. Often they make them with this creamy garlic sauce. Okay, that's going on the list. Oh, and for something truly authentic, you have to try boxty. Boxty? What's that? It's a traditional Irish potato pancake. Sounds good. You can have it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, wow. It's that versatile. It is. Okay, so we've got oysters, mm. mussels, boxty. Yes. All right. Now, what about souvenirs? What should we be looking for in Sligo? Skip the generic tourist shops. Okay, good advice. Look for the locally made crafts. Like? Pottery, ceramics, jewelry, woodwork. That way you're getting something unique and supporting local artisans. I like that idea. What about those amazing Irish woolens? Yes. You can find hand-woven blankets, sweaters, all sorts of beautiful stuff. And you can often meet the artisans themselves. Oh, wow. Learn about their techniques, even take a workshop. Ooh, to learn from the experts. Exactly. It's like taking a piece of Sligo home with you. Okay, I'm adding that to the itinerary. Uh. What about the Quayside Market? Ah, the Quayside Market is a must. Tell me more. It's only on Saturdays, but it's got everything. Local produce, crafts, antiques. Sounds fun. It's a great place to soak up the local atmosphere. It's all about the experience, right? Exactly. And while you're there, you can also check out some artisan food shops. Ooh, what kind of things do they have? Local cheeses, baked goods, chocolates, preserves. Oh, wow. Okay, my mouth is watering. It's good stuff. Okay, so much good stuff. I think we're ready to book our flights. Almost. We need to talk about the best time to visit. Irish weather, you know? Oh, yeah. Unpredictable. Very unpredictable. So you can enjoy Sligo year-round, but summer is ideal. Summer? That's June to August. Yeah. Pleasant weather, longer days. There are loads of festivals and events happening then, too. But I bet it gets pretty crowded, right? It does get busy. If you want something quieter, spring or autumn are great. Okay. Still mild weather, fewer crowds, and you might find better deals on accommodation. Okay. What about winter? Winter in Sligo is pretty magical. Really? Yeah. Much quieter and more peaceful. You might even see snow on the mountains. That's so picturesque. Yeah. Okay, so we have options depending on what we're looking for. How long do we even need to properly experience Sligo? At a minimum, I'd say two to three days. Okay. That'll give you enough time to explore the town, see the main attractions, and maybe squeeze in a couple of day trips. Well, if we want to really go all in, like hike Ben Bolden. Spend more time on the coast. Oh, then you'll need longer, definitely. Especially yeah. if you're planning on attending any festivals or events. Good point, good point. Any practical tips before we actually book those flights? Make sure you have euros and bring a travel adapter. Right, the essentials. Oh, and pack for all kinds of weather. Even in summer, you never know. Raincoat, waterproof shoes. Always good advice. Yeah, and most importantly, remember to relax and enjoy the crank. Yes. Embrace the Sligo charm. Anything else, or are we ready to move on? I think we're ready. Perfect. Now, before we uncover even more of Sligo's magic, let me ask you. What about Sligo has really caught your attention? It's all so cool. The nature, the history, the culture. It's a special place. It really is. Mm -hmm. But honestly, the whole Classy Bond Castle and Hugh Tunney, the Beef Baron, that's got me hooked. Ah, uh, yeah, Classy Bond. It's like a symbol of different parts of Irish history, you know? Yeah, explain that. So you have Lord Mountbatten. He represents the aristocracy. Right, right. And then you have Hugh Tunney, this self-made millionaire. A total shift in power. It is. And all this happens against the backdrop of this stunning castle. And all the craziness going on in Ireland's past. Yeah, it's like a mini version of Irish history and society all in one building. So, remind me, Hugh Tunney, 
he leased Classy Bond first. He did, yeah. And then eventually he bought it. From the Mountbatten family. Yep. <laughs> He was this fascinating guy, really a rags to riches story. Starting as a cattle dealer, right? Exactly. And he built this massive business empire. People knew him for his business skills and his big personality. And he ends up owning this castle. A castle that used to belong to, you know, British aristocracy. Yeah, that's a powerful image. It really shows how things were changing in Ireland at the time. The old guard was fading away. Exactly. <laughs> but why Classy Bond? Why would a cattle baron want a castle? Well, Tunney really loved the area. Okay. He'd been leasing the castle for years before he bought it, and he was a popular guy in the community. So it wasn't just about showing off. No, I don't think so. He had a really connection to the place. It seems that way. Plus, Classy Bon is just beautiful. What? Right on the coast, stunning views. I'm sold. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about Classy Bon, but let's zoom out a bit. Back to Sligo in general. Yeah. What about the stuff that really captures the essence of Sligo, the things you can't find in a guidebook? You're talking about experiencing the real Sligo, the heart of it. Exactly. It's about the people, the critic. That Irish warmth. Exactly. Okay, so how do we as visitors tap into that authentic Sligo experience? Well, the food is a good place to start. Okay. We talked about oysters and mussels, but have you ever heard of seaweed harvesting? Seaweed harvesting? It's a tradition in Sligo. I had no idea. They harvest seaweed from the shores, and they use it in all sorts of stuff. Really? Like what? Food, cosmetics, you name it. That's fascinating. It's this blend of tradition and innovation. Imagine walking along the shores with a local guide, yeah. learning about the different types of seaweed, okay. and then you get to taste dishes that have been prepared using those methods. That sounds incredible. It really connects you to the land and the people. It's like a direct link to the past. Exactly. Okay, seaweed harvesting is on the list. What else? Sligo is known for its traditional crafts. Oh, right. Like the wool stuff. Yes. Hand-woven blankets, sweaters, you can find it all. Beautiful. And often, you can meet the people who made them. That'd be so cool. Learn about how they do it, maybe even take a workshop. To create something myself, that would be amazing. It would be. It's more than just a souvenir. It's like a connection to their heritage. It's a way of keeping those traditions alive. Exactly. Okay, what about music? Ah, music. The soul of Ireland. You can't go to Ireland without experiencing the music scene. Absolutely. We talked about traditional music sessions in the pubs. The sessions are great. Yeah. But what about festivals? I bet Sligo has some good ones. Oh, they do. Sligo Live is a big one. It's every year. Yeah. And they celebrate all sorts of music. What kind? Traditional, folk, contemporary, you name it. They've got local and international artists. Sounds fun. It's a good time. And of course, there's Yeats Day. Oh, yeah. That must be a big deal in Sligo. It is. It's on June 13th every year. It's to remember his life and his work. So lots of poetry readings and stuff. Poetry readings, storytelling, music, all sorts of events. Even for someone who's not a poetry expert, it sounds pretty cool. It is. It's a good way to experience the culture. So we've got iconic landmarks, yeah. Kasiban Castle, hidden gems like seaweed harvesting, traditional crafts, the music scene. Mm. Anything else our listeners should know before they go? I think it's important to mention the spiritual side of Sligo. Oh, mm. interesting. Sligo has always had a connection to ancient Celtic traditions and spirituality. Even the landscape itself feels magical. Right. We talked about the myths around Ben Bulban. Exactly. And there are so many places in Sligo that have this special energy. Like Carol Moore with the tombs. Yes. Or Nocneria, the mountain with Queen Maeve's Cairn on top. It's supposed to be a powerful place. It is. So if our listener wants to tap into that side of Sligo. Yeah. How would they do that? Well, there are guided tours of the ancient sites, and they talk about the folklore and stuff. Okay. Or you can go even deeper. There are meditation retreats, workshops on Celtic spirituality. So whether you're looking for adventure, relaxation, or a spiritual experience, Sligo has something for everyone. It really does. And you can find all of that within a pretty small area. That's what I love about it. You could be hiking in the mountains one day. And then the next day, you're exploring ancient ruins. And that night, you're at a music session in a pub. Exactly. It's all right there. It's the perfect mix. It is. And you don't have to deal with the huge crowds you find in other parts of Ireland. So you get the beauty, the culture, the history, but without all the craziness. Exactly. It's a hidden gem. Okay. I am convinced yeah. Sligo is at the top of my travel list. Before we move on, okay, so let's say our listener is planning their Sligo trip. What's the one thing they absolutely cannot miss? Oh, that's tough. 
There's so much to choose from. I know, right? But if I had to pick just one. Yeah. I'd say experience the sunset from Nocneria. Nocneria. Yeah. Okay. I'm intrigued. What makes it so special? Picture this. You've hiked to the top of this mountain. Okay. It's ancient. The wind's in your hair and you're standing next to Queen Maeve's cairn. That giant tomb. Yeah. Thousands of years old. They could already feel the history. And as the sun starts to set, the sky just explodes with color. Oh, wow. Oranges, pinks, purples, all reflecting on Sligo Bay. And you just feel this connection, you know? Connection to what? To everything. Mm. The history, the landscape, the soul of Sligo. Wow, that sounds powerful. It is. It's like everything we've been talking about comes together in that moment. It really does. It's an unforgettable experience. So to recap, we've got Ben Bulben, Classy Bun Castle, Charming Towns, Delicious Food, and a whole region filled with natural beauty and hidden gems. I think we've given our listener a pretty incredible Sligo deep dive. We've covered a lot. We have. But like you said, this is just the beginning. The real magic is in experiencing it firsthand. Okay. So to our listener... We say, get out there, explore, get lost, and find your own piece of Sligo magic. And as you're wandering through this beautiful landscape, keep in mind the words of Yeats, who found so much inspiration in Sligo. He said, the world is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. What a beautiful thought. It is. So to our listener, we leave you with this final thought. Yeah. What part of Sligo speaks to you the most? Is it the adventure? the history, or maybe it's just the chance to savor the simple beauty of Irish life. Whatever it is, Sligo is waiting. Safe travels.